Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video, and you guessed it, it's on the artistic marvel Pentiment. Pentiment is a stunning narrative adventure role playing game created in the style of illuminated manuscripts and printed wood. The game is set in the 16th century Europe at a time when the continent was undergoing significant religious and political changes. In the game you play a journeyman artist named Andreas Muller who hails from Nuremberg. You get caught up in a murder mystery that unravels in the town of Tassings. This game is incredibly unique and a joy to play. Although it's mainly a narrative adventure, it excels in its execution, oozing style and intrigue that can easily make one get lost in its incredible story. The gameplay of this game is very much like a point and click adventure on steroids, as you have the whole town of Tassings and some of the surrounding areas to explore at any time during your story. As I stated before, Andreas and Nuremberg gets enwrapped in a murder mystery as an acquaintance of his is merged on his first trip to town, and a friend of his is indicated for doing the act. So, Andreas takes it upon himself to help solve who committed the unforgivable act. The brilliant developer who is behind this masterpiece is the legendary Obsidian Entertainment. Now I love this developer's games, as Fallout New Vegas is one of my favourite games of all time. So, when I saw their name on the game, that is why I gave it a go. This game has technically been 30 years in the making, as director Josh Sawyer's early ideas of the game came in 1992. Sawyer having a history degree, and mainly studying the Holy Roman Empire, has always wanted to make a historical game like this. Using a very small team from Obsidian, the game finally evolved into a beautiful, interactive tapestry we now see today. You begin this intriguing adventure atop a farmhouse in Tassin, where Andreas is staying during his apprenticeship in the Kirisu Abbey nearby. On the way to the Abbey, you encounter the Baron, who has requested a commission from your workplace. Unfortunately, the Baron is later murdered, and someone has falsely accused Piero, a friend of yours, for the crime. To get into the heart of the game, you must gather information from the townsfolk and the people of the church. They play a crucial role in your story as they can provide you with rumours, stories or even evidence to help you find the person responsible for the crime. You can do this in multiple ways but the primary method is chatting to them. You can obtain basic pieces of evidence from them, but certain questions may require you to win them over first. To do this you must have sway over them, which can be determined by several factors. For example, you could say something that would upset them or the opposite. This will determine the outcome of the question you asked. This system is like the old Telltale games. Other indicators can help you with this in the game, such as Andreas' past experiences. At the beginning of the game, you'll have many conversations with the people around town who ask you questions about the aspiring artist's past. The game gives you multiple options to pick from, including where Andreas studied and how he acted during that time. These options provide you with perks that give you additional dialogue options and can help influence certain questions or even allow you to read in certain languages, which is very important in this game. I think the past system is cool and reminds me of old games like Fallout or Dragon Age. It offers a different experience and outcomes of each playthrough, as well as various ways of solving situations. For instance, I chose for Andreas to have studied in Florence, Italy, which means he can now read and speak Italian. This was very helpful because I did come across a few books that were in Italian, and now Andreas can understand it. Now on to some more mechanics. Please keep in mind that this game is set in the past and may include unfamiliar terms or words. However, don't worry, Pentiment is here to help. Any words or names that you may not know will be underlined. Simply hit that back button to bring up an explanation of the picture or the highlighted character. This will allow you to continue reading without any confusion. At the beginning of the game, you'll notice that there is a time system in place. This plays a crucial role in how you gather and obtain new information, as you only have a limited time to decide whom to spend time with or whom to investigate. This is like the Persona games, where you have a specific time frame to complete tasks, and you must use the time wisely to achieve the best possible outcome. I love this from this game, as once you have an angle on someone, you may have to just double down on it just to get enough information to indicate them as the murderer. Now speaking of who the murderer is, it's honestly up to you. And it may not even have to be the person you indicate who did the deed. Maybe you're just framing them to provide the best outcome for the town of Tassie. You are never explicitly told who the murderer is in this case. You have to rely on evidence and your own intuition to determine the culprit. There are many potential suspects, each with their own motives, adding to the complexity of the situation. Each suspect seems to have received strange notes reminding them of the reasons to kill the Baron. It appears there is a third party involved manipulating individuals to commit the heinous crime. I appreciate the fact that there is no obvious answer to who the murderer is. It has an element of mystery and allows you to use your investigative skills to solve the case. However, it's possible to twist the truth and blame someone you don't like. Now I will say the whole murder situation with the Baron is only the first act. The game follows Andreas over a matter of years but all revolves around the town and the people of Tassings. The gameplay cycle of this game gets you invested in the people of Tassings and the Abbey of Kirisu. Now saying that a lot of this game so far is only really the beginning of Andreas' story means that all these choices you have made have huge impacts later on in the story. 
whether that be for good reasons or for the worse. And yes, that includes who you pick as the murderer. I'll give you an example how your choices can impact the story. For instance, I convinced the blacksmith to pursue a woman he was interested in from a nearby town. In the third act, I discovered that this blacksmith had in fact married the woman he was interested in. Although this is just a minor choice that only affects this one character, there are much bigger choices that I won't mention to avoid spoilers. These choices can lead to completely different endings for each player's story, depending on their actions throughout the game. Though the main plot seems to follow the same path, the characters of Tassin can have much different endings depending on what you said to them or did for them during the main quest. I'll say this whole ending style is very much on the lines of the old Fallout games, where technically the whole end of the game plays out the same and a few different bits here or there, but you end up beating an end boss, but after that you'll get a slideshow which will show you what you did over the course of the game, like say your choices. This happens mainly quite a bit in New Vegas because there's so much you can do. So throughout that whole end slideshow it'll show you what happened to those characters you interact throughout the whole story and it's quite an interesting way of doing it. So technically the endings could have multiple options but the actual end of the game is the same essentially. And Pentiment does a very similar thing. Obviously no end boss fight or anything like that, it's a story game but you'd still get that slideshow like thing at the end telling you what happened to the characters after the events of the game. I believe the strength of this game lies in its ability to fully immerse the player in its world. Many of the actions you take in the game involving interacting with both the townspeople and the holy individuals residing within the abbey. As a result, you begin to develop strong emotional connections with these characters and become invested in improving their lives as you progress through the game. Usually I don't like to do side stuff during the main story, but in like games like this I tend to forget even though you should be doing it. But this game got me uh, so invested in the characters inside, going around checking on my peasant friends, making sure they're right, and none of them had passed away or something bad happening to them, just to see what was next to them, see how they evolved. Anyways, I'll stop rambling, on to the next bit. Even speaking about those characters, they don't have voices, as there's no voice acting in this game, as the story presented to you is in a textual format like reading a book. The lack of voice acting is suitable for both artistically and in terms of gameplay. It allows the player to focus on reading what certain characters are saying and absorbing as much information as possible, while also looking really f***ing pretty. I would also like to mention another interesting thing in this game. Each character has a unique writing style. For instance, an uneducated peasant will have really messy handwriting with lots of spelling errors, while a scripture from the Abbey will have beautiful scripted font. This mechanic also includes more intricate details. If you discover later on that the character you've been speaking to has a much higher level of education than they revealed, their writing will change, and it will become more easy to read or just a more beautiful font. Carrying on with mechanics, there are some puzzles in this game, but nothing that will rack your brain. The game does do a great job in hinting at things for the player, but not making it so obvious at the same time. Usually, I focus on the music mainly, but what really caught my ears first was the sound design in general. From the beginning, I noticed that the sound design is fantastic. For instance, when you stand in a meadow, you can hear all the ambient noises, clearly, without them being too intrusive or annoying. This is awesome, because when you interact with a character and you're speaking to them, you can hear in the background all the little creatures or the wind blowing, and it just, it gets you so immersed. But now let's say you're exploring the crypt for whatever reason, looking for clues. You can now hear the cracking of walls in the background, water dropping because of a leak or something. You can really tell which place you're standing in doing certain activities because all these little things you hear in the background. It's really fantastic. I think they did a really goddamn good job. It's bloody brilliant. Now onto the music, which of course nails what it needs to be for this game. Composed by the Alchemy Early Music Ensemble, the music that they have contributed to this game is either strictly historical or historically inspired. And you can really tell, especially when music is heightened for certain important scenes like the Baron's death. Right, now peeps, onto the section I dislike the most, and that is talking about the game's bugs. Thankfully, in my playthrough, I did not encounter anything. So I did some online research to see if there were any nasty bugs still lingering around after its main release over a year ago. I found two major reports. One was about Andreas becoming invisible in Act 2, and the other was quite significant. Uh, to do with Brother Guy also happening in Act 2, obviously a lot happened in that act. I won't say much about both of them, as they contain certain spoilers, but with the Brother Guy one I'll, I'll bring it up because it's one of those bugs that can take you out of the game. Um, essentially, if you speak to him about certain things, you can then go back to talk to him and you'd think you'd react in a different way of what you just revealed to him, but it's like nothing happened, and that's essentially what the bug is. It's quite an annoying one, especially in the event that it happens in. It's quite a big event. This issue does later get corrected within the story. Now, while we are on the subject of bad business in this game, I will mention my problems. 
Now, thankfully, I won't say there was many that really uh, ticked me off or I found very annoying. Uh, one of the big ones for me was there's no manual save, but the auto save does really compensate for this. But just make sure when you're leaving the game, it will warn you anyway that when it previously last auto saved. To get it to force the save, you just have to load into a new area or go into a house and come back out, and that should have a save for you. So that'll fix the issue. But it would be nice if they could add a manual save, just or just a button just to hit save and it will save it there. So I think the reason behind this is so you can't save spam to change your choices, as this game is so backed behind those. I would assume is the reason I would go behind doing this, but it's quite annoying, especially when it's like been three minutes since you last saved and you have to quickly run into a house and run back out just so you can go have your tea or something or go to bed. If you're like me, you have trust issues with saving in general. Either you forget to save, like in a game like Skyrim, but then you get backtracked because there's no auto-saving, well, good auto-saving in it. Or in games where it's fully on auto-save, like Watch Dogs Legion, and it's broken, and you lose hours of gameplay, and there's no way you can trigger an auto-save because you finish the game, and uh, I could go into more about that awful bloody saving in that game. But anyway, yes, please just give both options. That's all I would ask. Now on to a bigger issue I had. Uh, this one I would say is actually quite significant. It's to do with the, the speech checks I've got on before, where you talk to a character and you have to have pluses of them for you to win the conversation piece. In this game, it's still down to a random chance, even, even if you have so much on your side towards them, and there is no way to go back and, you know, save spam like I mentioned earlier. Which is really frustrating, especially in the final act. The first act, I didn't really have a problem. Usually when you had enough, it would work through. But in the final act, you've just met some of these people. So you could have a conversation and you could piss them off so much. And then there would be no chance of doing it. Or even if you did it, to the fact you've said, Oh, I, I like all this stuff that you like. And then, how about you do this for me? And then they're still like, Nah, I ain't doing that for you. Even though you could just pick the other option, which is to do with the opposite of what she wanted, but if you failed that one, then they would do it for you anyway. It's such a weird system. I even did some digging online to see if anyone else had the same problem as I did with this, and yes, there are quite a few people who had the same problem. It, it, it can be quite annoying, especially in a game where like your choices do matter and you want to see these characters do different things for you, but when you ask them to do stuff and they say no because you just happened to say the wrong thing, or you just decided not to because it's a flick of a roll or something like that, it's really annoying. I think they should have a speech system like they do in Starfield where you have to sort of work your way through the conversation by picking the right choices that you think are the right choices and if you fail that, that's up to you and then it's it's down to you that you failed it. Also, with all that information you added, they could add that into the system to uh, make it easier to work your way through to convincing them. Say if you have additional information so you can instigate into them or try to get a bit more out of them, you can add that into that conversation so you will get the answer you wanted. Just something where it feels like it matters when I'm asking them stuff, rather than it just being, oh, a flip of a coin. I really don't like that for this game and it does, it did really tick me off in Act 3. So I would definitely say change that if you're gonna do something like this again, Obsidian. Yeah, there's also no workarounds for this or ways of doing it. You just have to get the information and hope it's just enough to get that choice. And if you fail it, you just have to do another playthrough, which is really annoying. I wouldn't say another playthrough is a bad thing. The story is great, but I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it for those bad reasons. I want to do it because I enjoyed the story. And I want to know I was going to get the choices that I wanted because I got the information and it mattered. Now let's get off that negative stuff and onto what my overall thoughts of Pentiment were. Well, I thought it was incredible for a game I did not think I would enjoy in the first place. I was very quickly proven wrong. Now, I admit a fault of the way I play, and it's usually I rush the main story, so I, I don't like to admit it, but no, I do. I tend to move style stuff because I want to do it later on, especially with big open world games where you can do that. Whereas stuff like Pentiment, that rubs off me in a bad way because you can't go back and you're missing character interactions. But in this game, it stop me from doing that because I was so interested in the side stuff. I actually went back, chatted to characters just to make sure they were still well or see what was up with them because some time passes this game so when you get to a new act you go back, see who's around still, what they're doing, what's happened since you've talked to them about certain events. It does it so well to keep you engaged in the side characters of this game. I wouldn't even call them side characters actually. Uh, the townspeople and the uh, abbey uh, lot with the, you know, the religious peeps. 
There's also the fact when you're doing investigating, you have to explore anyway. So you just end up running into people like old Smokey in the woods and just chat to him for a bit, see what's up, see if he knows anything about what happened with the abbot. It's it's crazy what this game does, and I love just doing the little puzzle investigations on the side. I mean, at one point I worked my way down into a, a mine shaft because I had a certain ability that allowed me to. It's just it rewards you heavily for exploration and chatting to people, and I think that's really well done in this game. Like an example I gave earlier with the blacksmith, just because I convinced him to go pursue the lady he was interested in, he comes back with a life later on in the story. That stuff's really cool to me, it just rewards you for, you know, being invested in these side characters. Again, I stop calling them side characters. Being invested in the characters of the game, because it, it's so well done, and they are the main part of your ending. So I will say, do as much as you can, and chat to as much of these people, just to get as much out of this game as you can. This stuff alone just made me want to replay this game at a later point just to see what else could change for me. I also really liked the story of the game and its artistic way it is portrayed it was absolutely beautiful. The unique historical art style of the game is such a breath of fresh air in this gaming space. The story is so intriguing as you get very involved in your investigation and rewarding when you get your evidence together to prove your case. I really enjoyed the setting of this game. I didn't know much about the historical period it was set in and it was interesting to see how important religion was to the people back then. It's also fascinating to see how taxation was still a b Religion is a significant aspect of this game, and it's intriguing to witness the characters' varied perspectives on faith. If you enjoy games that involve solving mysteries or have a strong focus on storytelling, I highly recommend trying out Pentiment. It's a unique and intriguing game that I believe shouldn't be missed. When it first was released, it felt like a hidden gem. However, if you're not a fan of reading, this game may not be for you. It's more like an interactive book than a traditional video game. Obsidian, you've delivered another beauty to my gaming library that I will happily come back to and experience again and again. And as Obsidian is now owned by Microsoft, you can of course pick this up on Game Pass. Or if you want to buy the game outright, it's £20 on Steam or Xbox, whichever platform you prefer. Of course, it's not on PS5 as it is an exclusive. The same goes for Switch, though I think it would be quite suited for a Switch, but it won't come to that because it is an Xbox exclusive. As religion is a huge part of this game and lots of religious dialect being Latin, I will leave you this video with a fitting phrase. Parma non sign polvera. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please stick around and subscribe and like the video and all that lovely stuff. Anyways, ta-ta for now.